The new comedy from director Alexander Payne, Downsizing, starring Matt Damon and Kristen Wiig, is now on DVD, Blu-ray, and digital download. Downsizing tells the story of scientists in the future who can shrink mankind down to five inches tall as their solution to overpopulation. So you can imagine, this film is filled with special effects, and the man leading the charge in the team is none other than Jamie Price, who joins me right now. Jamie, hello! Hi, Jeff. Good morning. Now, Jamie, uh, director Alexander Payne on Downsizing called you his special effects czar. So I guess that's a real, uh, a real compliment. But I heard you were quoted as saying that downsizing was your dream job. Explain why. You know, downsizing was a really great experience for us in visual effects. And when I first met with Alexander, you know, he didn't have a lot of experience in visual effects. And I told him this is a real dream job for us. And and he said, why? You know, it doesn't have superheroes and it doesn't have spaceships and I said exactly you know it's something new and different and one of the big challenges on this movie was exactly that you know it wasn't what you would consider a visual effects movie so we really had to work to make sure that our visual effects supported the story they needed visual effects to tell the story but they couldn't upstage the story itself so we thought a lot about it when we were designing our shots how we were going to just make these effects part of the fabric of the movie and not stand out so that was a particular challenge and Alexander was terrific to work with in that way he he helped us understand you know the movie he wanted to make and, and allowed us the freedom to to take that and run with it when we created the visual effects I also heard that Alexander Payne had trouble in directing this film because he was totally unprepared for the time-consuming efforts that it would take for these special effects it must have been a real big challenge yeah I mean he gave us a challenge early on he said to me I want you to fool me into thinking I'm making a regular movie and so when we thought about our solutions for visual effects and when I would design the shots, I would think about how do I keep him grounded? Maybe we'll build a little more set than we need here, or maybe we'll uh, set these angles up in a way that makes sure he understands what the relationships between the characters are. So we always tried to approach it in a way that he could feel comfortable and confident when he was on set, and similarly for the actors, that they would have enough to work with too. You know, if we needed the actor to sit on a box, for example, a cracker box, say, um, we would build a simulation of that cracker box even though we knew we were going to replace it digitally so the actor would understand where they were and so when we're shooting it, Alexander and the cinematographer would also kind of have some context for that scene. So we thought about that approach, how to keep everybody on the crew and the cast uh, really grounded and involved in the work. Now, Jamie, did you guys incorporate any old movie school techniques? You know, they, they used maybe 50, 60, 70 years ago when film first started, like force camera perspective? We, we did talk about doing some old-fashioned force perspective stuff in camera, and I really wanted to do it. We never quite had the opportunity. The shots really didn't lend themselves to that solution. But I will say, fundamentally, the technique we used to make the people look small, which was shoot a normal-sized person and then pull the camera really far back and shoot a green screen element of a person, and the fact that they're far away from the camera makes them look small, and when you put those two images side by side, you have one big person, you have one small person. That technique goes back to the beginning of cinema and uh, it still uh, pays off today. Did you guys look at earlier films like The Incredible Shrinking Man and, and all of these movies that had outrageous props like for inspiration? We did. We did our homework. We went back decades to the 30s and, and earlier, uh, 40s, 50s, all the way up to more recent stuff like Ant-Man. We looked at all of those movies and one of the things we learned was that we were making a different movie. You know, our movie is really a drama, it's a comedy, it's got social commentary in it. Those other movies were primarily science fiction or fantasy or family movies. And so we had a different tone and that informed our aesthetic. And we also have different expectations now with modern audiences. So we knew that some of the things that worked in the past, like oversized props, we really couldn't do. We would need to do those digitally in order to create the level of realism that we needed to make it look effective for, for today's audience. Now, after seeing Downsizing, Jamie, I noticed that it was in the trailer, but what happened to the giant absolute vodka bottle? I was waiting for that the entire film, and it just never showed up. Yeah, the vodka bottle, unfortunately, uh, in that particular scene, hit the cutting room floor. And a funny story about that, we were shooting that scene, and we had a big uh, wire prop stand-in for the vodka bottle. And um, I had one of our team go out to the liquor store and buy a bottle of vodka so we could hold it up in front of the camera as a reference. And so we did, I sort of stood there and held the vodka bottle up and lined it up with the, the actors in the background and then we rolled some footage on it. And uh, that ended up being what we used to uh, complete the shot for the trailer. We painted out the, uh, 
the uh, hand and put the bottle in. But, you know, sometimes those trailers get made before the movie's done, and uh, that particular shot didn't make it to the final cut. Now, with all these outrageous props and special effects and downsizing, you must have a favorite. Which one is your personal favorite in the film? Well, I mean, my favorite one was the saltine crackers when uh, the nurse uh, brings him something to eat after he's finished downsizing. And the reason I love that is we didn't have to do anything on it in visual effects. The prop was so great that it just worked perfectly and uh, had the desired effect. So that was a really successful one. Now, Jamie, you know, visual effects artists are the unsung heroes of motion pictures. I mean, today, special effects are bigger and better than ever. Uh, I remember being on a red carpet uh, event in Hollywood once, and here comes Dennis Muren walking down the red carpet. And every, all my colleagues were like, well, who's that? I'm like, that is the legend from Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, uh, you name it. Every Lucasfilm uh, movie he did, and he's got, you know, a ton of Academy Awards. So I was wondering, is visual effects community, are you guys like a close-knit community? We, we do, you know, it, it, visual effects is a fairly small community. It's a worldwide community now, but, uh, you know, we all work with one another and we all, and there are a lot of good relationships. Uh, I've met Dennis and known him for, for many years. And, and uh, so it is a, a pretty tight community. And, and, you know, this stuff is, is tricky. So we often rely on those relationships and our friendships and, hey, how did this work out on that picture? And what did, what did you do for this? And, and how do you like this? And uh, so, you know, we really, uh, we try to, collaborate and, and, and keep the community strong that way. Well, Jamie, congratulations on the effects and downsizing. They were truly spectacular. And I have to say, I am a huge Pacific Rim fan, and I know you were in charge of those special effects too. So I had to say personally, thank you so much for Pacific Rim. It's like one of my all-time favorites. Thank you and congratulations. Ah, thank you, thank you. Well, it was great talking to you. All right, Downsizing, starring Matt Damon and Kristen Wiig, is now available on DVD, Blu-ray, and digital download. And for more reviews and interviews, you can surf out over my website at VegasFilmCritic.com. I'm Jeffrey K. Howard in Las Vegas. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.